When you're asked to identify the intercepts of a linear function, all that's asking you to do is identify where the line of your equation crosses through the y-axis and the x-axis. So if you have your coordinate plane here, it's asking where is the line crossing the x-axis and where is it crossing the y-axis. These are your intercepts. So you have two different ways to figure out what they are. One is using the algebraic method, and we know that in intercepts, the only way we can get an a line to cross through our axis is if one of our ordered pair values is a zero. I have my coordinate plane here. The only way I can hit the x-axis is if I don't have a rise or a I don't, I don't have a rise in up or down, okay? So that means my y value is zero. X intercept always has one known value and that is the y in the ordered pair. Then if we're trying to find the y intercept, the only way our line can land on the y axis is if we don't have a run, either positive or negative. It has to be on the line. So that means our x value is zero. These are always known concrete values. And whenever you're asked to identify the intercepts, you have to make sure that you're writing it as an ordered pair. If you only write the x value for the x intercept, that's only half of the answer. If you only write the y value for the y intercept, that's only half of the answer. It has to be an ordered pair. So, because we know one of our known values, we can plug it in to our equation to be able to solve for the other value. So, if I'm trying to find the x intercept in this line, I know that my y is worth zero. So, I go ahead and plug in zero for y. 5x plus three times zero equals negative 15. Basically, the y is no longer a factor now, and I'm left with 5x equals negative 15. When I divide both sides by five, I get x equals negative three. So my x-intercept for this equation is negative three and zero. Now I apply the same strategy, but now I'm trying to solve for y. That means this time my x is going to be a 0. So I go 5 times 0 plus 3y equals negative 15. Now the x is no longer a factor in our equation, and I have 3y equals negative 15. I divide both sides by 3. That leaves me with y equals negative not negative 15, negative 5. So my y-intercept is 0 and negative 5. I could then go and plot these points. So I have negative 3 and 0, negative 3 and 0, negative, or 0 and negative 5. I plot those two points and then I um, can connect the lines and the equation of my line. The other thing I can do with this equation, if I'm being asked to graph it, I could rewrite it in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. And graph my line to then find out where it crosses, where the line crosses through both the x-axis and the y-axis. When you have a really simple equation, graphing Graphing can work. Uh, sometimes when you have a, not a whole number for one of your, your x or y value um, in your intercepts, then graphing is not going to be the most efficient. Mathematically, it's going to be. But let's, let's test this idea out. So I need to isolate y. The term sharing the left with the y term is the 5x. So I need to take 5x away from both sides. That leaves me with 3y equals negative 5x minus 15. And then I divide everything by 3. y equals, I can't reduce 5 and 3, so I have negative 5 thirds x. 
and negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. So this equation is now saying my y-intercept, because it's in y equals mx plus b format, is my y-intercept is negative 5, and my slope is negative 5 thirds. That means if I start here, I can either go down 5 and forward 3, or up 5 and back 3. I know because my slope is negative, my line needed to go down. So if we refer back to this line, if I started at negative 5, and my graph really, 1, 2, 3, 4, didn't, I just had, I'm just too short on space. So I said, all right, well, I need to work this backwards so I can go this direction. So I went up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then back 3, 1, 2, 3, up 5, back 3, plot my points, and drew my line. So I could still find that my x-axis was at negative 3 and 0. So this is just another way to confirm that the original math I did was correct because when I, my slope and my y-axis here, uh, or my y-intercept here, both confirmed my original intercept calculations. So these are the different ways that you can find your intercepts. Either plug in 0 and solve for x, plug in 0, solve for y, or rewrite in slope-intercept form and graph it to find your intercepts.